How are we doing there boys and girls, Matthew's here and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to finally teach you guys exactly how you can use Trade School Master to set up your legendaries and get yourself off to the races with posting all of those auctions and doing it in a competitive fashion without having to tweak and change with too much going forward. Now one thing I will say before we start on this is it is likely to change going forward. The way that we have to do it today is going to be slightly differently once TSM catch ups with how Shadowlands works and releases some of their updates. The reason we have to do what we're doing today is because fundamentally TSM has one big problem. Even though we love to use TSM, we have the issue that Trade School Master just simply does not understand the crafting cost or doesn't get its head around the different ranks of legendaries. But I'm going to explain to you today exactly how we can get that set up. We're going to do it in form of a little tutorial. It's going to be a slightly longer video, but if you follow along, you can replicate this for your profession for your legendaries and you should be able to get everything up and running. So what do I mean when I say that Trade School Master is fundamentally broken? Well we have here in our bags we have four crafted legendary base legendary items. For the purpose of today's video we're going to be looking at tailoring for one simple reason that it uses less materials and is quicker to explain. Um, but you can copy and paste this theory to leatherworking, blacksmithing or even jewel crafting if you wish. Uh, but let's look at the four different items in question. That's a Grim, Grim Veiled Mittens at 190, at 210, at 225 and at 235. Now the one thing those smart of you out there will have noticed is that the TSM crafting section for these claims each one of them to have identical crafting cost. Now this is a problem and this is the problem that we're going to fix today because it's a problem because they quite simply do not have the same crafting cost uh, and what this is doing is it's causing uh, people who haven't necessarily set up Trade School Master correctly to be posting things at the wrong prices and having real issues when it comes to anything above rank 1. TSM works perfectly fine for rank 1 because that's what Trade School Master defaults to uh, but the fact that rank 2, rank 3 and rank 4 have increased material costs is causing confusion which I hope to aid you with today. So first and foremost how do we get how, how, do, how do we start? How do we, how do we get a, this set up? Well firstly we need to get our Trade School Master groups set up. So let's uh, do a slash TSM, get the groups open uh, and what I'm going to do for the purpose of this video, guys, is completely start afresh. Um, we're just going to do a small example in this video, and then you guys can copy and paste that theory uh, to th whichever groups and whichever items it is that you want to be dealing with. So, we make a brand new group. Let's call that group Legos. It doesn't need to be complicated. It doesn't really matter what it's called. Then what we need to do is we need to have a group for cloth. Dealing with today. Now, one thing, uh, I suppose I should co cover a couple of vital things to understand about legendaries, is that we don't actually need to do a custom operation for every single item in the game. We can categorize things a little bit, and I can uh, explain how that works by showing you my spreadsheet. Now, some of you guys will be very aware of my spreadsheet. Hopefully, some of you will have been using it. Uh, up until this point already. If not, the link to it is down in, in the description. Um, but tailoring cloth, cloth based legendary items. What we can see is we can kind of categorize things together based on their material costs. And this is what we're going to use to help build our groups and eventually build our operations. So we can see braces and cape share the same uh, material costs. The belt, the gloves, the boots, and the shoulders share the same material costs and the helm, the pants and the chest, they also all share the same material costs. So, what does this mean? Well, I've just called these Tier 1, Tier 2 and Tier 3. Um, that will become more important later on. If you hadn't noticed this to be the case already, you now know. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to create separate groups for each individual item and then when it comes to creating the t operations we can kind of categorize things so that we don't have to make quite so many operations. But if all of this is already sounding a bit pie in the sky to you, don't worry, it will become clear once we get to it. Um, but for the groups, so we're going to do cloth. For the purpose of today's videos, we're going to be dealing with the mittens, which are uh, gloves, so they're tier 2. 
So we're going to want another subgroup under cloth for tier 2 items. And then under that, this sounds like a lot of groups, but eventually it'll all pad out nicely. Then we're going to want the, 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 the gloves. And then, <laughs> I know it's getting, getting long, but rank 1 gloves. We're going to also have rank 2 gloves. We're going to have rank 3 and we're also going to have rank 4. Now I know this looks like a lot of groups inside groups inside groups. Is this really necessary? And unfortunately with Trade School Master right now, yeah it kind of is. Um, let me give you a sneak peek of exactly how it looks once you've got it all set up. Uh, this is my actual bank tune right now. You can see he's got a lot of legendaries. I'm in the process of selling a whole bunch of stuff. But you can see we've got this exact same setup. So we've got a, a master group for legendaries. We've got a subgroup for cloth. Within that subgroup, we've got the three different tiers. And within each of those, we've got the items and then the rank ones, twos, threes, and fours. And what you'll notice is each and every group only has, if we go, if we look at it through here, it's a little bit easier. Each and every group will only have that exact item in it. So Grimveiled Cape is a tier one item. And at rank one, we've got the Grimveiled Cape at rank one. So you kind of need to have every single item in its own individual group. This isn't essential, but it's the way that I do it and it keeps things organized and it will be a it will make your life much easier long term. So you've got to be organized from the from the beginning. Um, this is what we're going to eventually be creating. But back to our back to our actual dude for the tutorial of this. So we've got the gloves at rank one. We need to now add the item to the groups. Now there's a couple of different ways you can add items to groups within Trade School Master. But for me, I tend to find the most reliable way of doing it is actually having that item in your bags in the first place. So we can go, we can look at the ungrouped items in bags and we can see that, right, Grim Veiled Mittens, we need to find the rank ones, which are item level 190. These ones, select them, make sure it's ticked, and then click add item. That item is now in that group and it cannot be in any other group. This is the thing to be aware of with Trade School Master. When you're setting up your groups, any single item can only ever be in one group at a time. That's kind of quite important. Rank 2, we need to repeat the same thing again, but item level 210. Click it, make sure it's ticked, then click add to group. Let's repeat the process very quickly for the rank 3, which are item level 225. Now, the names of these groups, it doesn't matter. Call them whatever you wish. If you don't want to use the same naming structure, it's entirely up to you. But this is what's worked for me. Uh, Grimveld Mittens rank 4, select it, make sure it's ticked, click add to group, make sure it's the only item in the group. Cool. So, we've got some of our items and we've got them in the groups. That's great, but how do we go about selling them? Well, we need to make some operations. Um, one thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to teach you a little trick that will save you, uh, it will make the operations easier to create. And we're going to do that by using some custom price sources. So what we need to do next is we need to go to settings and we need to go to custom price sources and we're going to click on add new custom price source. Now this is going to be what we're going to reference in our operations because what we have to do with our operations with TSM right now is basically tell TSM how much the item costs but we do that by uh, you could either just put in a flat gold value but that's not very sensible long term um, what we're going to do is we're going to reference individual material prices so the main material to create these is shrouded cloth so you could either call it shrouded cloth which is a bit long or you could do what I do and just shorten it to SC shrouded cloth and we're gonna say that our shrouded cloth price is two gold and click confirm so anytime we can now use this in any operation and wherever we use it in an operation TSM will consider its value to be two gold if we repeat the process again for the enchanted lightless silk so Enchanted Lightless Silk. Just the naming structure can be very, very simple. But our Enchanted Lightless Silk, let's say we can get that for 150 gold. 
One thing to note that's very, very important is that you put the G at the end. It seems counterintuitive, but make sure the G is at the end or it won't work. And then click confirm. So we've got a group for the shrouded cloth. We've got a group for the enchanted lightless silk. And we now need a custom price source for the arboreal shard. So we'll just say arboreal shard. Uh, and currently, these uh, by default, these are 125 gold. If you've got some reputation with some of the factions, uh, namely the Avowed or the Wild Hunt, the more reputation you have with them, the cheaper you can buy your Boreal Shards for. And if you happen to be Horde and happen to have a Goblin, you get them all the way down as cheap as 100 gold. And then we click Confirm. So now we can, now this may not make too much sense to you right now, but these are the materials that are needed to make these legendary items in the first place. Um, you can see that if we go to small screen mode and we open up tailoring and let's get it so you guys can actually see. Here we go, gloves. You can see the Grim Veiled gloves need shrouded cloth, need en enchanted lightless silk and a boil shards. For each reagent needed we've created our own custom price source and this will um this will this will help when it comes to crafting the operations in a minute so we've got those in place if for example you're doing with leather working or you're doing blacksmithing you need to repeat the same process but for the materials that those items need uh, like i said we're dealing with tailoring today because it's the least amount of materials and it makes the the tutorial uh, as, as, as simplistic to follow along with hopefully Right, so we've done this bit. We got our custom price sources in place. Now's the fun bit. Now we get to actually create some of those auctioning operations so that we know how things are going to be sold. So let's create a brand new operation. This is going to be for the group of... We're going to do the rank one gloves. So this is what we're going to want to try and set an operation for. You need a custom operation for every single uh, group or you need a custom operation assigned to each and every group. So this one, we know it's a cloth, it's tier two, and it's rank one. So let's go to operations, override parent operations, and then click add more operations. Now what we can do is we can create, a, we haven't made an operation, so we can create a brand new one, click on the create brand new operation button, and then we need to give this a name. So. You want to give your operations names that make sense. So, uh, base Lego is how I start the name of all of the operations that are for the legendaries. Uh, then we can go cloth, because it's a cloth item. We've already established that it's a tier two item. So we can do T2. And we're currently doing an operation for the rank one. So we're gonna, this is gonna be the final name. Base Lego, cloth, tier two, rank one. And just hit enter when you complete. What we can now do is when it comes to the minimum prices, we can delete the default stuff. Okay, it won't let us fully delete it until we put something in there. Okay, sure. Delete the default stuff because we don't want this default one. What we want to do for our minimum prices is this is where we want to start building out the actual crafting price of the item. So the easiest way to do this, if you don't use a spreadsheet, I recommend you do use a spreadsheet because it's easier. But if you don't, you can do it in game, assuming you can craft that item already. So let's go to Grimveiled Mittens. Let's go to rank one and let's get the material values. So. We never want to sell something under what it costs us to make. That's logical, right? So we need to build out the crafting price in here. So we're going to need 45 multiplied by shrouded cloth. Now we created that custom operation, SC. SD, SC gives us the cost for the shrouded cloth. So there's part of it. That's the cost for the shrouded cloth. We need to add on to that. 15 times the price of enchanted lightless silk, 15 multiplied by enchanted lightless silk. We need to also add on to that the arboreal shard. And it takes 10 arboreal shards for rank one. 10 multiplied by our price source of arboreal shard. This now 
is the minimum this is basically the cost for us to make this item it takes us 45 shrouded cloth it takes us 15 enchanted lightless silts and it takes us 10 aboil shards uh, once you've got this what is usually sensible to do is uh, make sure that you're because you never want to because things like the auction house takes its cut you want to make sure that you're always multiplying this by 1.1 now you can set this number this is basically a multiplier for all of it if we do put that whole section in brackets so we're going to multiply whatever this comes up to be so whatever magic number this comes up to be which will actually be the crafting cost of your green veiled mittens at rank one we're going to multiply that by 1.1 to make sure that we never list it cheaper than what it costs us to craft because that would just be silly right we can also then copy this and paste it into the normal box and change this first starting point if we happen to be really really lucky and happen to be the only person selling that item on the auction house it's entirely fair that we sell it for considerably more than what it costs us to craft and that's where our gold comes from that's our profit so normal price five times that maximum price doesn't really matter for maximum price if I'm totally honest very very rarely will this ever be a thing I just set all of my legendaries to half a million any legendary that's being posted on the auction house for more than half a million I don't want I just want to ignore the fact that it's even there just post at you know normal rates so minimum price this is basically our crafting cost multiplied by a small amount so that we always make sure that we make a little bit of gold every time something sells and me personally this is up to you you don't necessarily need to do it but if the price on the auction house is less than what it costs to post at uh, lost if the auction house price is less than what it costs to craft it I choose to then post my auction on the auction house regardless but I will post it at my minimum price which means if it sells I'm making a very very small amount of profit on it but it makes sure it makes sure basically that I never lose any gold um, and this is what we have to do for every single group and for every single legendary item that you can craft so as you can see this takes a lot of time to initially set up uh, let's just quickly tune some of the other posting settings I like to post everything for 12 hours that's because I'm very often playing the game and I'm happy to sort of check back on my auctions uh, a lot I choose to also post two but you can post as many as you want my recommendation to start with is just post one post one at 12 hours get it up on the auction house uh, bid can be a hundred percent undercut amount set at zero copper you never want to undercut uh, there, there, there is there is virtually no reason in this situation to ever undercut uh, if you start undercutting all you're doing is is just chipping away at, at your potential profits but this sort of stuff you can tweak and change as you like once you've made the first one the next one and the one after that and the one after that are more simplistic for the exact reason that we can then duplicate that exact item so now we've done the base legendary cloth tier 2 rank 1 which is what we're going to use on our group for the grim veiled mittens at rank 1 let's duplicate this and let's rename it to, to rank 2 and hit, ed hit enter it's very important every time you make a change within TSM to hit enter otherwise sometimes the settings don't save but now we can go to rank 2 and we can see that the material prices has gone up and we can just change these numbers so it's gone up from 45 to 70 and 25 and 15 make sure we copy that paste it in the normal the normal we want to set to 5 and every time when you're finished make sure you hit the enter button so the settings save so once you've made the first one you can duplicate to rank 2 let's very quickly then duplicate this again change the settings for rank 3 rank 3 is 110 and 40 and 25 hit enter 
copy, paste, change to five. You can see you get into the rhythm of this pretty quickly. And it's something that you'll genuinely do over time because I don't imagine many of you will have unlo unlocked everything uh, right at the very beginning. So let's change this now goes up to 175, 175, 65 and 40. Make sure we copy this, paste it down below, change the multiplier to 5, hit enter. And there we go. There's our four operations for each four of the ranks of the Grimvound Mittens. Now what we've got to do is we've got to remember to actually assign these operations to the groups. So we go back to groups, we go to rank 1, this is our 190 mittens, go to operation, uh, and you can then assign it in this group here. We already set it for the rank 1, so we need to do the same for rank 2. Uh, cloth, tier 2, rank 2, go, override, add more, cloth, tier, th tier 2, rank 3, and override, there we go. And that's what we have to do. And this is what you're going to need to do for every single time you unlock a new legendary or for every single legendary that you want to post and sell on the auction house. Um, the reason we categorize them into tiers is because it cuts down the amount of those operations that you need to make. If you want to go really crazy, you could ignore the categorization of the three different tiers and just create an operation for each and every single. So gloves rank one, gloves rank two, gloves rank three, gloves rank four. Pants rank one, pants rank two, pants pants rank three, pants rank four, etc. etc. Um, but now we've got some of the operations. The reason we use those custom price sources is so that we can change the prices quickly and easily based on when we buy or sell materials. Um, if we look at this now, for example, you will see that the minimum price changes. If, what we're looking at here is the TSM auctioning. If it doesn't show up in your tool tips, you can actually go into the TSM settings. If you do a slash TSM, go to settings, go to tool tip settings, and you can change it to actually show you what the, what the values are what your minimum price is, your normal price, and your maximum price. So one of these options down here, here we go, in auctioning, you can set it to show whether the, show in the tool tip the minimum, the normal, and the maximum price. I always recommend having this ticked, it's very, very helpful. What that now means though, is when we hover over these, you can see that the normal ones, the minimum price is ever so slightly above the crafting cost, uh, 3,674. So not going to be a lot of profit, of course, but we don't. We hope not to sell at minimum prices. But then, when we hover over the two tens, we can see the normal price is now five thousand nine hundred twenty-nine, nine thousand five hundred ninety-two, and then finally fifteen thousand five hundred ten. This is working out across the board. Basically, hacking TSM into having the right prices, and the trick to it all is basically those custom price sources, and a whole bunch of fancy operations. Uh, you're going to need to uh, sort of manage these numbers over time. This is one thing to why using TSM is not just to set it up once and forget about it. You actually do need to come in from time to time. If you get a really good deal on some enchanted lightless silk, for example, you could come into here and you could change the enchanted lightless silk price. Say you were really, really lucky and bought a whole bunch of it, more than you ever need for 100 gold, then you can change the price in there. And that is going to change the price of all of the operations that reference this little custom price source. This is why we use the custom price sources over just putting in gold values in the operations. Um, so there we go, guys. That's the fundamentals of how you get Trade School Master set up within TSM to actually work <laughs> it is, is the honest answer. Up until this point, Trade School Master has been a bit goofy, uh, and I do hope that in the future that this all changes. If it all changes, then I'll release a new video giving you a, a much quicker and easier way to set this up. But 
I hope that helps you guys. Um, remember to give the video a like if you enjoyed this. Leave any comments down below if you uh, or if you have any questions on how to set this up. Either myself or one of the community will step in and hopefully try and answer your question. Um, but yeah, hope that helps guys. I've been Mantheus. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.